Hello, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Night SQL Virtual Group, uh, a virtual user group. My name is Sarah Huang. I'm the founder and organizer of this virtual group. Join me here is Debbie Huang. She is our co-organizer. Today, we are happy to invite Steve Wake to present reports on the go SSRS 2016 mobile reporting. Steve is currently a data warehouse and BI engineer three with NCM and has experience in various industries using the full Microsoft BI stack. He is also very involved in the SQL community speaking at events across the country, blogging at weekbi.com, and is currently chapter leaders, uh, chapter leader of the Miles High, Mile High Power BI user group. We appreciate Steve prepare and present this topic for our virtual group. Before I transfer the screen over to Steve, let me first go through a few slides regarding the past community. Um, PASS has officially launched, so many of you, sorry, many of you probably already visit the website and see the new branding and logo. Um, past member engagement campaign uh, is here. So from March 1st till March 3rd, uh, May 31st, uh, 2017, PASS will be supporting local group leaders to engage with existing PASS members as well as uh, encourage new members to join local groups. Uh, the goal is to increase awareness of PASS as an organization, as well as the uh, associate learning and networking opportunities available to members. This is mostly for the local user group, but uh, you you probably can see updates uh, on the uh, local group progress over the few months. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact community team at uh, pastor.org. These are the upcoming virtual group sessions. Uh, some are, of them already passed, uh, but if you like to see the details, you can visit past.org uh, um, for additional information. And this is our future group, uh, virtual group meetings uh, we laid out for you um, for April, May, and, and June. And past virtual groups has a new branding. Uh, you can see uh, with different colors. And this is our virtual chapter. It's a Saturday Night SQL. And you are more than welcome to join our virtual group. And the membership is completely free. Uh, here are the upcoming SQL Saturdays. Of course, uh, we probably have a, like a couple here. Uh, for the rest of this month. And this is how you connect with the PASS. You can sign up for a free membership at PASS.org and use Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. And if you have questions, you can always use a hash sign, SQL PASS, uh, you know, post your questions there. Hopefully somebody will answer answer it. During our session, this is how you ask questions. Um, if, you, if you would like to uh, interact with uh, Steve directly, you can raise your hand 
and we will unmute you so you can uh, get, uh, ask your questions directly. Um, you may also enter your question in the chat window, and uh, I will read read them out loud so uh, Steve, uh, everybody will know what the question is, and Steve will answer the questions for you. Thank you again, Steve, for spending your Saturday with us and um, share your knowledge. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Okay, let me transfer screen over to Steve. Great. Thanks again to Sarah and Debbie as well for uh, setting all this up. Uh, let me see if I get the right monitor here. Let's see. We will do that monitor. So hopefully you will be able to all see my slideshow. Yeah. Great. All right. So as Sarah uh, kind of went through there, um, the session that I've put together for today is uh, reports on the go, uh, specifically SSRS 2016 mobile reporting. Uh, so even though it does have, uh, we'll get into the agenda, it's, it is pretty specific to the 2016 because of uh, some of the new integrations that have come into play uh, with mobile reporting for that. So. Um, I'll go through that as much as I can, and as, as Sarah mentioned as well before, uh, if you have any questions or anything, uh, I do have the chat window up that I can see them. Uh, if it's something that is, is pertinent to what I'm talking on, I'll try to maybe answer it you know, uh, as we go. Otherwise, we will have plenty of time at the end of the meeting to actually unmute people as well and go through the questions too, so feel free to... Uh, um, ask them that way. So you can queue them up throughout the presentation and if I don't get to it, I'll get to it at the end. Oh, I just need to get, there we go. Uh, so this is just kind of a bio slide. I uh, kind of already went through most of this, um, but as, as uh, Sarah mentioned, I am currently the chapter leader of the Mile High Power BI user group, which is a, a official um, Power BI user group uh, that Microsoft, the Microsoft product team that runs Power BI is actually uh, getting a bunch of these spun up around the world. So if you go out to uh, community.powerbi.com, if you're at all interested in Power BI and getting to know more about that as a reporting tool as well, uh, reach out through there and look at the different uh, user groups that are hopefully in your area. And then you can also see below some of my uh, contact info, I'll put this slide up again as well at the end of the presentation so that you guys can uh, uh, copy any of that stuff down and I'll have my email address at the end as well. So just kind of a basic agenda for what we're going to be uh, looking at here this evening. Uh, first thing is kind of defining, you know, what is mobile reporting within SQL uh, at this point in time. Uh, some of that stuff is always changing as you know, so it's going to be current as of now, as of when I made these slides at least. Uh, you'll see there at the end I do have a section where I'll kind of talk about some of the future stuff that's probably coming specific to mobile reporting, so we'll, we'll go through some of that as well. And then a bunch of the time actually will be demos, and then I, I included a, a section in there because I thought a lot of people might also be interested in, in, in kind of a compare and contrast between uh, what are actually called mobile reports in Reporting Services 2016 and Power BI, which is also considered a mobile platform for reporting uh, as well. So uh, kind of go through the pluses and minuses of both those, and I'll probably interject some of that into the uh, presentation as I go on as well. So to kind of level set here on uh, what is SQL mobile reporting at this point in time, uh, there is uh, the new concept within SSRS uh, 2016 that they changed the naming of what you all may be used to as the report manager within reporting services, which was when you connected to your, your reporting services server through a web browser, you would type in whatever the name of the computer was, slash reports, and it would go to uh, the report manager at that time. Well, they decided with the complete rewrite of that entire piece that they would change the name to the web portal now. So it doesn't have reporting in the name at all, it's just considered a web portal. So uh, 
kind of keep that naming in mind when you hear people talk about web portal within SQL Server. That's what they're referring to now is what we're all used to as the, the older version of the report manager from uh, the previous versions of SQL Server. But it is a total rewrite of that uh, platform and I'll actually show it to you in a little bit as well in a demo uh, that is fully cross-browser supported uh, since they now coded it all in, in the HTML5 standard, which all modern browsers support, even uh, browsers on phones and tablets, etc. So uh, it is finally opened up to everything. You don't have to worry about just using IE anymore once you've upgraded up to 2016. Then there is this term uh, that launched with 2016 as well of mobile reports. Uh, and the distinction they're making here is that uh, mobile reports, if, if you're not familiar with, there was a technology that Microsoft acquired uh, probably a little over two years ago now from a company called DataZen. Uh, it was a standalone product, but uh, Microsoft ended up buying them and, and kind of integrating it in. So with 2016, this is kind of the first version where uh, a lot of those features from DataZen are all baked into SQL Server reporting services now. Uh, but they did change a few things in how that works. So if you do have exposure to data Zen, uh, the development UI and stuff will look the same, but as far as how you connect to the data, that has changed quite a bit actually with the new version and how it's integrated. And we'll go through all of that as well. And then there's this new concept uh, as well that isn't necessarily mobile, but it does show up in the mobile app. So I thought I would go ahead and talk about it a bit, but there are what they call KPIs or key performance indicators uh, that you can actually now embed into that uh, SSRS web portal uh, that are just little quick things to look at. You'll see them, though, uh, I'll show them in a minute in that web portal, but uh, just nice little um, numbers usually with maybe a small chart or something showing you a trend line uh, of that number uh, and stuff like that. So a, a very basic little setup of, um, I think the idea being that the new web portal for reporting services becomes more of a, a universal uh, first stop shop for reporting is kind of what I think Microsoft is going for with this. So uh, adding this ability to, to use these KPIs right there on the web portal is just something that uh, I think helps with that uh, to make it more visible. And then there's the, the other really big reporting tool. If, uh, I'd be surprised if most of you hadn't already heard about Power BI, but that's kind of the big new tool that Microsoft's been really pushing and working on uh, that is considered a uh, end user self-service BI tool uh, that pretty much can um, cover the whole range of uh, doing ETL and accessing data from multiple data sources, being able to build a model in the background and then report on top of that and then deploy it out to a cloud platform, uh, at least in its current form, a cloud platform. And soon, soon enough, hopefully we'll be able to put it into SSRS 2016 as well. Uh, so these are uh, a totally different technology as far as how the reporting works. And like I said, we'll kind of go through some of the pluses and minuses of uh, the differences between going the mobile reports we're out now and what's coming down the line with Power BI since it is mobile enabled as well. So just some uh, ways that you're going to be able to view these mobile reports uh, since they are a little different than uh, just bringing up a browser, which is of course one of the options. It's the second option I put down there. You can always bring up uh, all the SSRS report types via a browser, just browsing out to that web portal. Um, as long as you're, you know, if you're on your personal laptop, not at work, you may have to enable uh, some kind of VPN solution or something like that to be able to connect into your uh, works uh, network if you are trying to access your SSRS reports that are not published up to uh, the internet in any form uh, other than, you know, on your personal uh, or on the corporate land, I should say. And then the other big option that now opened up, of course, is um, the weird thing is you actually do have to download and use the Power BI mobile application to access the SSRS mobile reports and KPIs that we'll actually talk about. So even though you uh, aren't required to have an account or anything with Power BI to make this work, uh, if you want to, um, or if you're, you're 
IT staff or you, if you are IT, has set this up properly, uh, you can actually, through that Power BI app, actually connect to rep your reporting services instances and actually then browse uh, all of these mobile reports that will go through and also the KPIs. And as you can see, it's in pretty much all the major mobile platforms at this point. Um, iOS it covers the entire uh, stack of iOS, including the Apple Watch, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Android, they just uh, finally un uh, unveiled a tablet-specific version for Android. They've had the phone version out for quite a while, so uh, if you are an Android, you've got those options. Again, just looking for that Power BI mobile application. Um, and I've also got hyperlinks in this presentation, too, that actually will take you directly to the link. Uh, so we'll, f we'll get these published, either to go on my blog or... Um, I'll make sure that Sarah and, and uh, Debbie get these so that they could post them somewhere if they want to as well. But uh, um, yeah, you can go to that link and it'll actually show, take you to the links to the stores to download from iOS for Android or even Windows 10, uh, which is out there as well. If you're using a Windows 10 phone or a Windows 10 uh, enabled tablet, you can actually uh, also uh, get it from there. So those are all the options. Uh, that are available for it. There are some, uh, got a little screenshot down here at the bottom that is kind of showing that uh, there are some interesting extra features you get only with the mobile uh, versions of the apps where you can actually do annotations. Uh, you can actually draw on the screen and circle things and write notes and stuff like that. And then you can actually save those um, annotated versions and actually make those available for people as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's only currently um, using any of these mobile applications has that capability at this point in time. Uh, so if you are using a, like a Windows uh, laptop that happens to have a touch screen, you'll just need to run the actual Windows 10 uh, Power BI app and then you should be able to have the full capabilities to annotate that way as well. So um, not necessarily just limited on Windows 10 to phones and tablets, but also to uh, any touch screen enabled device. You can actually uh, download that Windows 10 app. It runs across all those uh, platforms. All right, so that is the intro. So now I will actually get into showing some stuff. So the first thing I'll do is I'll launch my browser here and we will take a look at this new web portal. It takes sense sometimes it gives me an error the first time it loads up, but I just hit refresh and it all magically works. So this is, um, if you haven't been into SSRS 2016 at all, in my particular case, uh, what I've done is use the new feature that is called favorite. So I'll browse to what you would normally see. This is what you might be used to a little bit more if you uh, have been using SSRS for quite a while. This is the, the home folder. Uh, the UI itself looks very different, of course, from what it looked like uh, in the old version. Um, but what also has been added is this favorites capability. You'll notice some of these items like the profit one over here on this KPI, this mobile report here have these stars next to them and you get those stars by clicking on a little um, you know when you click into these items you can actually go in and, and tag them as favorites uh, is what you can do that's a folder so you can't really star a folder but uh, if I came in here uh, you can see I can remove it from favorites if I have one down here like this one that I want to add to my favorites I can just click and add it uh, so then once you have at least one item in your favorites your default page changes from that home page uh, that you're always used to, the home folder that you're used to always going into uh, to this new uh, favorites page becomes your new uh, home page when you launch a browser uh, to connect to this. So a um, little bit of a change there and the nice thing is is that anything that you have current access to on that report server, even stuff that's within subfolders, uh, you can come in and star. So if there's this particular report that was within that folder, I can add that to favorites and now it just shows up in that favorites list uh, even though it's within an actual subfolder. So that's kind of a nice little shortcut if you if you do have an SSRS implementation with tons and tons of folders and subfolders and stuff like that. You, this uh, makes it nicer for uh, people to use to actually star things. Uh, and you'll also notice that it's categorizing uh, the item. So I'm not going to go through all the categories, of course, since this is kind of focused on mobile reporting, but I did want to highlight KPIs uh, is shown separately. 
And in mobile reports, you actually do get a nice little preview of the actual mobile report, kind of a picture of it uh, in miniature form showing up as well, which is really nice. Uh, and then you'll notice there's a paginated report section, which is actually the, um, if you've used SSRS and created the old RDL reports, I shouldn't say old because it's still current as of now, but uh, any of the, the regular reports that you've been creating in SSRS for quite a while, those will all show up in the paginated reporting section. Uh, of the of the folder page. Uh, the new new kit on the block is the Power BI desktop reports uh, and at least in the current version of uh, 2016 uh, when you uh, all you're doing is really file sharing that .pbix file which is the file that's created uh, and saved within the Power BI desktop application. Uh, it's just saving that file onto the server uh, so there's no direct uh, way to run Power BI within this UI at this point in time. It's just going to um, be the file itself. There is in preview right now actually uh, a version of uh, the next version of Reporting Services 2016 where uh, this has been actually set up so that you can click on it. It opens up a Power BI uh, report right within the actual uh, web portal here. So that's a feature yet to come. Um, best estimate so far has been like June or July uh, of this year is when it's supposed to come out as an add-on for reporting services so uh, we'll see uh, where that ends up. And then they all, there's also a couple other things that will show up if you upload any Excel workbooks they actually now show up in their own category as well and anything else that's not one of the uh, items above shows up in, in what they're calling resources so um, one thing to keep in mind because they do show up in a separate area here that I do like is that uh, if you want to put any kind of report documentation with your items you can actually just upload those Word docs or text docs and they'll show right up into that resources section so that makes it easy. All right so uh, KPIs so what we're um, we'll talk about real quick is these are just really easy uh, as you can tell just in this case you give it a title you give it a number and you give it a trend line if you want to uh, very easy to set up very quick to see the colors kind of are tied to uh, either you can fix make the colors a fixed color if you want for the background or you can actually dynamically uh, make the colors indicate whether you're in the green and the yellow or red type scenario uh, however you want to do that dynamically and the numbers can be dynamic too so uh, they're edit they're actually managed right within the web portal UI if you click manage on the item it actually just brings you right to the editor so it's all done within the browser so these are not very complex as you can imagine because they are pretty easy and quick to set up uh, and as you can see the values uh, if I open up the drop down there uh, it will show both that you can set it manually which is the default or you can actually attach it to a data set field uh, so you would have to have an existing SSRS data set already deployed out to the report server uh, that you could then link to and you would actually have to know exactly what data set field uh, to go pull this value from if it was some kind of profit value you would have to have that data set set up um, to pull that in and as you can tell it's a single value so you'd have to make sure that whatever that that data set is that's pulling that value that the value you want is always going to be the top uh, row because it's only going to pull in the one top value from that data set um, so you either set one up to make sure it's doing a you know unique uh, or distinct on the row whatever you want to do or um, just make sure it's always at the top same thing for the goals and the statuses. Uh, this is where the color comes into play is the status, but you can make it dynamic, but it only has three values, good, bad, and neutral. So you have to set it appropriately. If you're going to tie it to a data set, it needs to be a one, a zero, or a negative one. And in trend, kind of the same way, you can set it up with a data set as well, or not even have it. If you don't want a trend, you just set it to not set. It goes away. In this case, it's all uh, just set up static and then you can change the visual if I click the line you can see that the little line graph the graphic over here changed to a line from the uh, way it was before with the step set up or you can have an area or you can use a bar chart so or if you don't want visualization I'll just choose the no visualization and it all goes away so 
fairly easy to set up, but like I said, they do require an existing, uh, if you want to tie them to data, it does need to be an existing SSRS data set for that to work. A shared data set, I guess I should clarify. One that's actually deployed usually into the data sets folder uh, on your your server itself. So like in my case, I have all these different types of, of data sets actually already set up. Those could all be leveraged on the KPIs. <laughs> and as far as mobile reports, as you can see here with the new browser, uh, if you have a mobile report deployed to your SSRS server, uh, that's kind of a difference uh, if you were on Data Zen before. Data Zen had its own server. Um, so that, that product has been deprecated or is no longer supported by Microsoft or DataZen. Uh, there are tools out there. If you go searching for uh, migrate from DataZen to reporting services, there's an actual free uh, download that Microsoft provides to actually get you uh, the ability to, to migrate any existing DataZen reports that you already have up and running and push them over to SSRS and get them deployed out to the server just as this one is. Uh, this was just a sample I put together. There's actually no interaction uh, set up on this one. It's just kind of a dummy report that I put out there to show something in that category. At least we'll go through actually uh, creating one that actually does work here in a second. But this gives you a, a good idea of the type of visualizations that you're allowed to do within, uh, within the mobile reports. So you can do full control of browsing them within uh, the actual web portal for SSRS, but you'll notice you can't edit it uh, from within here. Uh, so we'll get into that in a second as far as what the, the tools are for editing, but it isn't something you can do right within the web portal. You do have to use a separate tool uh, to edit uh, mobile reports. Uh, and then the rest of that, as I said, it's kind of not specific to mobile reporting, so we won't go into any kind of deep detail on anything else. In fact, I have a, another session that I'll do for this group actually in June that will go through uh, more detail on all the other categories as well. So if you are interested in the paginated and power, the more Power BI desktop stuff, we'll, I'll cover that in that session in June uh, as well. So put that one on your calendar for future. So uh, I have the data sources and data sets that I have set up uh, within my particular local instance. Uh, I have a few databases installed. Um, most of them in VentureWorks. I just have a couple different versions of VentureWorks and then I have uh, the newer one if you don't know is, is the Worldwide Importers is the new uh, database that Microsoft's starting to use for samples. I guess they got sick of bikes because uh, VentureWorks is all about selling bicycles. Now at Worldwide Importers I think they sell all kinds of products. Uh, is their fake company for that. So I'm just going to launch Management Studio here real quick just to kind of show you the data spaces I have available. <laughs> and now all the new stuff with all of SSMS is it always has to update itself because it's trying to make sure it's got all the latest versions of Visual Studio components for it. Sometimes it takes it longer to launch than we would all like. Okay, there we go. Now we're finally getting somewhere. Uh, so we'll connect to my database engine on my local 2016 instance. So I'm running everything in this VM uh, that I'm running right now is actually all a 2016 uh, instance. Uh, but some of the databases I have are AdventureWorks um, for the older for 2014 and then for 2016. Uh, I also did go ahead and download the, uh, the data warehouse versions of it. It's just a um, normalized and... and uh, set up differently adventure works. It's really the same thing, same kind of data, just put into a, a more of a data warehouse form. So we're not going to have time to really go through what a data warehouse is over a regular database, but um, there's lots of stuff online if you're interested in, in what that is. But I'll mostly be using uh, the AdventureWorks DW 2014 and probably the AdventureWorks regular 2014 uh, for the different stuff in this demo. And then I do have an analysis services instance as well. That's 2016. And there I've got just the 2014 data warehouse version of the multi-dimensional uh, cube. So there is some stuff we can show where it actually works with multi-dimensional as well for mobile reports. So if you are invested in 
analysis services, you can actually still use those um, data sources as well within the mobile reports, which is nice. So it does just kind of show you what's there. I will switch back and then show you the data set. So that's kind of the, the key to uh, both the KPIs and the mobile reporting, as I've kind of mentioned multiple times, uh, are tied specifically to these data sets. So if you've been doing a lot of uh, reporting services development in the past and you were using, when you're building the report, you have the option to uh, just put the text query right into the report itself, or you could actually reference these data sets uh, on your system. You would need to have these data sets in order to be able to leverage uh, getting any data off your SQL Server from for either the KPIs or for the mobile reports. Uh, neither of them work with direct any kind of direct query capabilities as you saw, especially with the KPIs when I went through that UI to create those. It did only support an existing data set uh, to actually pull in dynamic data. So if you haven't yet in, done a huge investment in SSRS in the past and built out a bunch of these uh, shared data sets, uh, you will have to do that uh, first off to actually even get mobile reporting to work uh, within your scenario if you are going to use SSRS uh, for mobile reporting. Uh, I'll talk about the alternatives with Power BI uh, towards the end, but that, that is an alternative that does work a little differently than uh, the mobile reports or KPIs do. Uh, so there are options uh, if you haven't gone that route so far. Uh, but this is more for the people who, uh, if they've already invested a lot in SSRS, have done the RDL reports or the, the big paginated reports uh, through time, uh, they probably have uh, invested a bunch of time and effort in creating all these data sets, and now you can actually uh, easy, easily leverage those for uh, this true mobile reporting, as, as Microsoft is really trying to sell it as right now. So you see I got a bunch of those data sets already deployed out to this specific server. And what I'll do uh, is now launch the actual editor for uh, that, uh, for doing mobile reports. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in, it's a little hard to see. Uh, this icon down here on my desktop uh, is actually the mobile report publisher is what they're calling it right now. Uh, it's a free download and if you already have SSRS 2016 set up and installed in your environment, uh, within your IT environment, you should have access to this download uh, item right here at the top of the web portal. If you click on that, the first item actually in the download list is this mobile report publisher. Uh, so you click that, it actually just takes you right to the page on the Microsoft site, so they're no longer, uh, if you use previous versions of SSRS, um, you could download the report builder and stuff like that that's still shown on there, but it would download directly from your, your report server itself. Now what it's doing is it's actually always linking out to the website uh, where the user can go and individually download the latest versions of all these tools because the, the issue they've started running into is that these tools get updated quite frequently. Um, Mobile Report Publisher was actually just updated uh, I guess it was the end of last year. I thought it would have been updated sooner than that. But uh, uh, in the case of the other tools, um, like the, the Report Builder was updated recently and the Power BI desktop gets updated at least once a month. So with that, they've found that it would be a lot easier to just provide links uh, through this download area on the web portal. Uh, and it also does have the link for the Power BI mobile too. If you, you click that, it does take you to the page that I had linked in my slides that takes you right to the appropriate places in the App Store, the Windows Store, and the Google Play Store that you can actually uh, download the, the Power BI mobile app. So those are just hyperlinks that will take you out. Uh, if your company has policies on Downloading from external sites, that's, you know, something um, may have to battle with. Hopefully, maybe, you know, if they're blocking that kind of stuff, maybe they've got them out there on a file share that you can grab them from or something like that. But, um, yeah, if you, if you do have issues with getting the appropriate rights on your computer to install these tools, that'll be something you'll unfortunately have to probably uh, negotiate with your IT department. But once you do have it installed, you can click on it. And it too sometimes takes a little bit to launch. Doesn't look like it's going to be too bad today for this one. 
But this is the new SQL Server mobile report publisher uh, is the application that launched now. Um, if you used DataZen at all in the past, this pretty much should look very familiar to you. They really have not changed the UI uh, on this uh, that much at all from what it was uh, as DataZen, as it was previously called. So um, if you've been comfortable with that and build, building reports with it, you're in good shape because uh, so far at least it hasn't changed that much. It does work on a little bit of a different concept if you are like me coming from years of SSRS background. It's, it's oriented a little bit differently towards um, more of a, a BA or a business analyst, data analyst type position being able to at least um, try to put together this report on their own. The only thing they may struggle with is the data connection piece that we'll get into and the, and the interactions pieces. Uh, those tend to be a little bit more um, advanced subjects uh, to set up in these reports that they may have to turn it over to you know a developer uh, that knows the tool to actually go in and, and work with that with them. Um, but you do have this uh, navigation pane over here on the side with various provided uh, items. Uh, you can see it's a fairly short list. They don't give you uh, as many options as some other tools do uh, at this point in time. We'll see if that how that changes over time. Um, but you do have the option for some data grids. You can do some mapping stuff and then um, a lot of different chart types uh, that you can set up and then some nice gauges uh, that you can use as well, including some things that would um, usually be considered like a KPI type setup. And then you do have some uh, options for uh, maybe like filtering list or slicers uh, that you may uh, think of for other tools. That's kind of what these top navigator options are. And kind of the cool thing with, with this particular, uh, the mobile report publisher, uh, is that you, everything is basically live right from the start. So if I go and say I want to do a time chart, as an example, and you just decide how many blocks in this grid you want to make that particular thing work, you'll notice it's already showing data. Um, this is kind of a pre-built-in uh, was there with Data Zen. That was kind of one of their selling points is that uh, the idea of being like a BA type person, as I mentioned, or, or somebody who knows exactly what they need to see uh, for their reporting could just come in here and just start uh, grabbing items uh, and dropping them onto this uh, surface and then actually without worrying about, you know, tying them up to data right now, just at least get the, the look and feel that they wanted uh, with their particular uh, report just kind of roughed out at least. Uh, so right now there's, you know, fake data for all four of these, and I'll show you that in a second, how it's actually generating all that in the background. But as I just keep pulling stuff onto the surface uh, and making each thing its own size, as you can see, it's dynamically sizing all that stuff. Um, it's just creating all that data in the background. So none of this data is real. Uh, none of the interactions work, as you'll notice. As, you know, I can't do any kind of filtering by clicking on states or clicking on parts of the pie chart. None of that stuff works um, at this point in time. Let me just throw one more thing on here. Let's just throw this little half donut chart. Just fill it up nice. But um, so yeah, you get a kind of idea of, of how you can start building this stuff. You know, if they don't want to wire up the data, they can at least come through here and add some text for the titles, the subtitles. Uh, this accent option is kind of a, you know, turn the background black uh, kind of is what it's uh, there for. It has that on every single item, whether you can turn on or off that accent option. So that's kind of up to you to decide if there's something that you do want to highlight uh, with it, and then you can actually control um, how the chart is set up um, by some of these different options they have. Uh, do you want to set it up so that it's only showing a single year, uh, or do you want it to show uh, quarters, you know, stuff like that. So you can see how it's dynamically changing, or you can make it auto and it will try to use some intelligence within the control to determine how it's going to set that stuff up. How is the number going to be shown? You know, do you need a legend uh, to show you the different categories? Uh, should it be uh, side by side bars? You know, so all of these different chart types have all kinds of options on them. So don't think that um, the picture there that's shown 
uh, over here in the navigation pane is is your only option for each of those. You really do have to kind of pull each of them over and play around with the different uh, visualization items uh, that are actually available for it. We'll leave that one as stack bar for right now. So that kind of gives you an idea how that stuff is set up. You can kind of come in and play with the, if you want to remove something or uh, duplicate it, you got it all set up really nice. You want to copy and paste it, you can actually do that through these, uh, the little arrows or uh, the gear, I should say, that shows up within each of the controls. Uh, they each have their own. Uh, different one. Uh, you can also change the title so you don't have to have just new mobile report. You can change the title of course as well. There are palette controls over here uh, so there are uh, a set of uh, different themes. Uh, if you click a theme it rethemes the entire report. My gosh that one is really bad. I would not use that one. Um, something like that's not quite so bad but uh, yeah, you can play around with that to kind of see. These are really your only color choices currently um, within this, although this list is is fairly long. I think you should be able to find something that works. Um, but if you do want a corporate color scheme, um, far as I know right now, there's no current way to really uh, override the colors. Um, but I'm sure that'll be something that's coming since I know they just added that with Power BI uh, just within the last week or two. So. I think that's something that's kind of going to be Microsoft wide that all these tools support a little bit more flexibility in colors. Uh, the other option you'll see up here is how big the pad, the surface is. So um, this is the default view when you first come in. It's what they call the master setup. As you can see here, this little drop down here is, uh, is it master, is it a tablet, or is it a phone? Uh, set up a layout for the different uh, reports. You have to create a master layout for your mobile reports, um, but you're not required to create a tablet or phone version. Uh, so what that means is that you don't have to create a tablet specific version. So what you'll notice is when I click that tablet, uh, it kind of switched the orientation from being widescreen to now being kind of a, a, a wide portrait type setup is the idea if it's a tablet. And then if I actually go and select the phone option, it becomes even smaller, of course. Um, but you can tweak the, for any of those options, you can tr uh, tweak how many rows of grids there should be and how many columns of grids uh, to fit what you think your need is uh, for your particular application or that particular report. Uh, it can change within each of those. But like I said, you have to create the master. So you're always going to start with the master. If you start with the tablet or phone, uh, it's not going to deploy properly. You will have to come back and actually create the master version uh, to make that work. And so you can, as you can see, I can add more uh, rows and more columns if I wanted to for the master. Uh, it just makes things, uh, the individual little square smaller uh, is basically what it's doing to fit more onto the screen. So I'll change that back to what it was. There we go. And as you saw when I did that, it, it does give you that extra space. So if you do find this isn't enough space for what you want to build, um, feel free to play with those settings as much as you want. So then, yeah, I guess the other thing then is if you are going to create a tablet or a phone-specific version, uh, what you'll notice is that when I move to those versions, uh, the controls that I have available to me on the left changed. I no longer have that full list of all the report elements of the different types. All I have are the ones that I actually put onto that previous uh, master slide. And now I could put them in completely different order uh, for this setup, for in this case the tablet setup. And even you can decide not to include certain controls. So uh, maybe on the tablet version that the, tr the uh, that tree map and the um, the map will be far too small to actually look at, so maybe I just won't include those at all uh, within my mobile setup. You'll also notice there's no capability to make it like scroll to another page. Um, that's something that I know they added to uh, Power BI recently, but yeah, that doesn't exist currently in the mobile report. So you are pretty much stuck to the report fitting on a single screen uh, within a tablet or a phone on this particular setup. Um, I assume that'll be something they'll also work on too. So I'll just kind of show you real quick, create all of the layouts. In this one, I'll just decide 
we'll just highlight these two charts as all will show on the mobile, on the uh, phone version. So something that you can play around with to keep in mind that uh, you know when you're using those different uh, versions that that's all you're going to see on those different uh, setups. Uh, so that gives you kind of an idea of at least how to get started. This is kind of that particular little demo there, you know, is, is kind of what I see as a normal, uh, as I mentioned before, kind of like a business analyst or a, a power user type setup. They say, hey, I know I want to see uh, this type of visual on here and this type of visual here. They can, you know, get all that stuff set up, as you can see, very easily uh, and then just turn it over to you. They would just save it. Uh, and give it over to IT or a report developer or someone who uh, knows more of the tool and maybe more of the data because that could be the struggle is that that user uh, that knows what they want to see won't necessarily know where the data is or how to get it wired up. Uh, so when they turn that over uh, to you, uh, it's easy enough to go into then the data tab. And this is where you can see how uh, it created those simulated tables in the background. In this case, it was um, it, it's smart enough to know that the simulated tables for uh, some of these controls can be shared. Uh, so the time chart and the thermometer, and I'm guessing, nope, the tree map's using its own, as I would have noticed if I saw that. Uh, sample grid is using that simulated table. Uh, as well. So there, there's some smarts going on in the background when you're creating that first demo version that it's uh, only using uh, so many of these simulated tables. And if I were to go through and wire all of these up uh, to the actual data, uh, those simulated tables would then disappear. Uh, so it is smart enough to make it so that these simulated uh, items go away uh, in the end. So as you can tell, it is kind of a little different. It's a, a twist on how those of us who've done SSRS for a long time are used to doing reports. With SSRS, you're making regular SSRS reports. You're forced uh, usually into creating your data sources and your data sets first, get all of your data that you're going to use in the report figured out and linked up, and then start designing the report itself connected up to that data. Uh, it's kind of the opposite with uh, the actual report publisher, you can start out, uh, I mean, there's nothing to stop you from starting out with the data. I just find it, um, the way they've set up the flow within the tool, it's definitely easier to start out with the layout, uh, get all the controls you actually are gonna use within the report set up, or at least a few of them to get you started, and then go in and add your data and wire up the data to each individual control. Uh, so again, you'll notice on the, left side when you're in the data tab, you get all of the controls that you've currently added to uh, that master layout and now you can go through and actually choose uh, what are the, the tables uh, that you have available, what are they going to be wired up to uh, is kind of how they're set up. So I'll come back to that in a second, we'll actually get one that's, that's actually wired up to real stuff. Uh, then there's some other stuff that uh, just some basic setup stuff uh, that you can do that's available on all reports. Here's also where you could change the title for the report, but if you do want to change the currency, uh, if you're using dollars, it'll actually then um, let you choose that. And then if you've got a, a different kind of a fiscal start that you want to use for any of those uh, selectors for the uh, day of the week and stuff like that, you can change all this stuff. Uh, and the effective date of the report. And then there's also some options about caching uh, to make the report actually run a lot faster and also some uh, ability to do encryption as well. And then you do have the option to preview it. So if you go into preview, that's kind of like what we're used to in SSRS. Uh, again, no interactions are set up. You can see the highlighting is moving around as I hover my mouse over stuff, but when I click, it's actually not doing anything because you do, in mobile reporting, have to set up all of that interaction. And unfortunately, with the, the time we have, I don't have a ton of time to go through all that kind of stuff, but that is stuff that you do have to do yourself. It is not automatically set up, which is um, something I'll get into in a little bit when we compare and contrast that to Power BI. <laughs> So out of preview, then your other options are then to, um, to publish it up to the server or save it to the file system. So when you click the save, uh, you've got those options to actually just save it out to your file system. 
and then also save it out to your report server. So if I click Save Server, uh, in my case, because I've already gone through here before, uh, this is actually already set up for me. So if I do like SQL Saturday or Saturday night SQL, let's put that on there. Uh, just so I know that's what it's for, I'm going to say I want to put it out onto the root or the home folder on that local host reports. Click Save. This will now actually push it out to my report server. So now if we go back to there, come back to the home folder, we should, if I refresh hopefully, see that new report should show up in the list. I'm not sure what this, there it is. I finally should, I'm going to close that tab that's Power BI trying to log in. So now you can see this is that new, the new mobile report we created is actually right here. If I click on it, uh, again, it's it's fully browsable and interactive. You know, you can interact with it within the, the browser here in the web portal, um, just the way it is. So even though I didn't attach any real data to that report, just like this other one I had out there, it's, it's, it's out there. It's not incredibly useful because it's all simulated data, but you can kind of see how you can quickly... Um, do some prototyping and stuff like that on the report uh, before you actually uh, dig in and start doing the the date work or the data work I should say which is the next thing I will cover is how the data connections work so I'm going to start fresh actually I'm going to create a brand new one and I am since since I am more used to the old SSRS way I'll show you kind of how you can start with the data and then move to the um, visuals uh, so when you click on add data, I may not have hovered on that long enough and it's taken a little while sometimes for the screen sharing to catch up, but there's this, this add data button up here at the top. This is where you actually, when you're in the data tab, uh, actually go in and wire up all of your uh, data sources and data sets that you're actually going to connect to. I guess I should just say data uh, sets is what you're going to see. Uh, you click that button. And then you only have two options with the current version of the mobile report publisher. You can pull in an Excel workbook or connect to your report server, as I mentioned, uh, to go and grab existing data sets. So you have to tell it what folder your data sets are in. And then it just brings up all the data sets. So there are some restrictions currently with data sets as well um, that do annoy some people. Uh, if you have a data set that has a parameter in it, as this one did, you'll get this uh, error message about could not add data, this data set can't be used because it's got a parameter in it. Um, some of that stuff you really can't easily work around. Uh, if you're first getting something up and running, I would suggest using data sets that don't have parameters in them. Uh, you can't even, uh, with regular SQL data sets from everything I've found so far, uh, you can't even uh, get past it by setting the default on those parameters. Uh, it still will actually throw an error even if you've set up a, a default value uh, for parameters. So you do truly have to have uh, an item that does not have any parameters on it at all. So it has to be a, a clean data set that has no parameters. So like if I choose this pro product data item, I've got that one set up without any parameters. So it will suck that in. And once it does, it's very similar if you've used um, Power Query or Power BI to get your data. Uh, it does have this capability to actually um, show you the actual data uh, here within the UI, as you kind of saw earlier with the simulated data. It is actually going to show us the real data in a grid uh, type format. Uh, once it does come back, I'm not sure why that data set's taking so long. I did this earlier and it wasn't an issue. Might have to uh, try a different one. For some reason that one is not liking me. So we will go back and I will try just a real simple one. We'll try the stores one. I think this one's really small. Hopefully I'm not having an issue with my report server all of a sudden giving up on me. Let me just make sure that's not the case here. Let's hit and with the, S, with the 2016 version, you actually can now come in and do data preview on your actual data sets now, which is kind of nice. 
as long as it doesn't have parameters too, because unfortunately it's kind of the exact same limitation. Uh, if there are parameters on your data, uh, it actually won't work here either. And this one, yeah, it looks like there's an overall problem with my machine with getting to the SQL Server data. <laughs> there we go. So that one did finally come back and then, yeah, so that shows you what it looks like there. Let's see. Ah, this one did finally come back. <laughs> So this one's a pretty simple data set. In this particular case, it's just a, uh, some kind of an ID and then all the store names. Uh, so pretty basic data set. But if you have you know, three or four or five, whatever, however many different data sets you want to connect to with this particular report, uh, you just keep actually choosing them uh, and it'll just keep adding them. Uh, so in this case, I got like a location thing for all my stores. Uh, and then let's go and grab some product stuff. So let's we'll try that product categories. Actually, yeah, we'll get categories. And then we'll go get some product sales. I think this product data actually has some sales. There we go. So we got some, some different territories and their sales amount uh, for uh, this particular year that this data is for. So you get you start getting a bunch of these data sets. You can come in and actually do settings on each one if you want to actually export that data out. For some reason, you can do it. And you'll notice there is this parameters option. So this is where you can uh, do parameters on a data set. So um, it's interesting that the UI allows you to uh, set up data set parameters uh, on it, but it won't let you bring... Uh, a data set actually in that already has parameters on it. So that is one of the, the things I found kind of annoying about getting used to using this mobile report publisher is some of these limitations on, on what you do for, for parameterized data sets um, needs to be worked out. I'm sure it's something that they'll uh, figure out with uh, later versions of this product and get it um, worked out that way. But let's say these are going to be the different uh, data items we're going to report on. So I'm going to go back to layout. And I'll pull just a few. We don't have a ton of time, so I'll pull just a couple of things over uh, and kind of give us some ideas on the type of stuff that's possible. Do like a category chart down here. And if you you know you, you're building the report, you find out you need more data, you can always go back to that data um, grid there and actually. Uh, set that up as well. You can just always keep adding more data to it if you need to. And we'll put a nice big grid on here. I guess let's not leave white space. Go ahead and take it all up. So just going to have a few items on here just so we can quickly see how to wire these up. Uh, we're going to call, I'll change the title on this one to be our total internet sales. Uh, no subtitle. I will use a abbreviated currency because oh, hopefully our sales are enough in the millions that it actually makes sense that way. Uh, the category chart, I think I'll pretty much leave it the way it is, but we'll try to do um, product category sales. Uh, you can set up the sorting on this particular one. It's already set up for abbreviated currency. We could choose whether we want the different uh, stack bar, stuff like that that I went through, and whether we want horizontal or vertical. I'm actually going to change it, and I'm actually going to turn the legend on. That's what I'm going to do for that one. And then the grid, I'm probably going to pretty much just go, let's just call this like product sales. This will just be a detailed dump from that uh, particular one. You can do some aggregations by date or a field. There's also these drill through target buttons that you'll see as well that allows you to make it so that when somebody selects uh, any item, that's where you can get the ability to uh, filter uh, items. So if somebody clicks uh, on a specific category uh, within here, you can set up the drill through target to go to another mobile report that then uh, can show them stuff or it just goes to another item within that specific report. So those are all things you have to configure uh, within mobile reports. So now that I added some items and I go back to my data tab, those three items now show up, but they're all currently attached to a simulated table. Uh, it's not smart enough to, to wire it into one of these uh, existing data sets. Um, so we do have to go through and manually 
uh, set this up. So instead of pointing it at the simulated table, I'm going to change that numeric value to be the product data, and I want the internet sales amount uh, column is the one I want to do it on. And then you have some options. Do you want it to be the sum, the average, the min, the count, the max, the first, the last? Uh, in this case, I do just want the sum. So I'll just change that one and show you what it looks like when I go back to layout now. So now it changed to 30.9 million. So now it is wired up to that data. And what it's doing is it's just taking all of the internet sales amounts here and just adding them up is all it did because I didn't specify any kind of filter on the sales reason, region or the, the territory, uh, reason is what I meant to say, or the territory. So it is just taking every single row in this data set and just adding it all up in this particular case. Then I can go to that product sales tab and connect it up to the same thing. So we'll say product data 2014. And then from there you set up what are the columns over here on the right and then what order they appear in. So this little thing allows you to drag and drop uh, and choose what order. Uh, if you don't want to show an item, you just have to unclick it and it just won't even show uh, on the particular thing. And then you've got the same kind of options here. What kind of formatting do you want to do? We'll use abbreviated currency here. Um, whether we want it aggregated, in this case, we're going to show each of the rows, but if you do uh, decide to do some groupings and stuff, then you could actually choose to sum it. Uh, this one is product cost, so we will use We'll just use currency for that one, why not? And again, we'll choose some just in case. And then quantity is going to be just a regular number, uh, which are fairly small. So we'll just use abbreviated just to take less space. So that sets up that particular item as well. If I go back to layout, now that's the data I'm getting. As you can see, it did do the abbreviated for this one. Uh, unfortunately, the grid is just a little too small to actually show the, the quantity, as you can see. So uh, we're not actually getting that to show through. So you'd have to do some, some tweaking. You don't have a ton of uh, options as far as some of that stuff. But you do get to change the column headers, uh, which might be a nice thing to do. Uh, so it looks nicer. Get rid of these underscores because your users probably won't understand why there are underscores. They don't usually get why we uh, have to do that. They don't understand that systems, computer systems tend not to like spaces. So we always use underscores or no spaces at all. Da -da 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 -da. Just do some real quick stuff. Clean this up a bit. And actually I think I'll just turn off that quantity since it doesn't really fit anyway in this particular chart. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. So you can see you can kind of go through and customize all that type of setup uh, out there. And we got one last control to set up, which is the category sales. Uh, this one I'm probably going to use, yeah, I'll use that same data. We'll just attach them all to that same data set. So we'll do product data. Um, what do we want to use the series on? So uh, in this case, I'm, do we want to use it by the territory or by the sales reason? I'm actually going to use the sales reason in this particular case. Then you choose what is the uh, item that is being tracked uh, as the series. By default, it just selects the first one, but in this case, what I'm using is a multiple category stacked bar chart, so I can select multiple items there, and then you could control uh, whether those are sums, averages, mins, uh, etc. So if I go back, you'll see exactly what the stacked chart does. So as you see here, it's really, really hard to see. There is a, the slightest of a red line, or pink, or salmon, whatever that is, showing up on this price bar uh, on there. Uh, but it is really hard to see because it is such a small amount compared to the the dollar amounts and in this case it it wouldn't really make sense usually to include the the quantity because quantity is not the same as of course dollars the other two measures are actual dollar amounts but I just was kind of trying to show you how using that stacked bar chart uh, allows you to choose multiple uh, items from your your data to actually then generate the stacked bar automatically for you you can also come in and um, in this case, I do want to change some of the sorting uh, on this particular item. 
So you can go through, and I did this earlier. Oh, here we go. Data point sorting. Uh, so you can choose. Do you want to do it alphabetical by that particular that category over there, uh, or do we want to do it numeric descending? Typically, most people would like to do it numeric descending so that the biggest thing shows up at the top in this case or to the left. Uh, but you can uh, choose how that works uh, if you want to. So that just gives you kind of a quick idea how some of that stuff is is set up within a mobile report. Um, the biggest challenge I've found, as you've seen with some of these, is that it's just very different than, than what a lot of us are used to if we've done SSRS reports in the past. Um, I'm trying to come up here. We go. We'll just do product sales. I was kind of come up with a nice title for the report there. I was trying to do two things at once. All right, so we're going to call it product sales. Um, but as you can kind of tell, it's it's similar in reporting to reporting services reports in that we're limited to a, a specific set of controls that are built. It's different from SSRS and Power BI for that matter in the sense that um, you can't, as far as I know, do any custom uh, visualizations with mobile reports. Uh, what you see here is is all that you get, you know, unless Microsoft comes in and adds more. Uh, particular different controls to this list. This is really what you're stuck with at this point in time uh, for controls for mobile reports. Um, both SSRS and Power BI especially have capabilities of uh, using C Sharp code or JSON files and stuff like that to actually build your own visuals. Uh, and then also with uh, Power BI, uh, you can also use the R language if you're uh, familiar with that to actually uh, do more statistic type based stuff. So that is a quick run through of building a mobile report and since we're kind of coming up on the hour mark I will switch back here real quick and go through just kind of a quick uh, as I kind of alluded to some of the pluses and minuses between the mobile reports and Power BI because those is kind of the the battle that I hear a lot of people are having is, you know, do I invest in mobile reports or do I just invest in Power BI? And at this point in time, and that's what's important about this discussion, is you have to frame it in that this is as of right now. Um, there is this, uh, you know, if you have all these SSRS data sets already out there and that's what you want to leverage, mobile reports is probably perfect for you because you have those data sets already out there and ready to go, whereas Power BI can't even use those data sets. So for Power BI, you would have to take the actual queries that are within those data sets, pull them out, and actually uh, build the new setup uh, within Power BI as, as data sets for those uh, because it does not currently support SSRS data sets uh, within Power BI. Uh, if you want to keep everything on your own servers, uh, you don't want to push anything up to the cloud at this point in time, mobile reports is probably the way you want to go with that. Um, that becomes not as big of an issue coming up here probably uh, middle end of this year when SSRS uh, 2016 is actually going to be able to host and, and uh, show actual Power BI reports from your own reporting services instance. So it will no longer require you to push them up to the internet. Um, I also I pointed out with the mobile reports if the provided set of visuals is good enough for what you want to develop then you can uh, stay there but if you want different types of visuals custom visuals the ability to build your own and use our support then you pretty much are going towards Power BI at that point in time and then I still think mobile reports as you saw I mean it's it's not as bad because you're not actually deploying reports that some people say uh, that's more of an IT focused um, way of doing things, but you are still saving items out to your reporting services server. So uh, some shops may uh, limit who can and can't do that. So it is um, possibly more of an IT uh, type uh, setup if you're going to go the mobile report path um, with that. And then Power BI, the other big thing about it is it's truly meant to be a full suite BI tool and, you know, pretty much try to do everything as far as mashing up data from all kinds of different data sets because as you can see with what I did with the mobile reports I brought in four different data sets 
that I could have access to in that particular report, but there's no capability to actually uh, do queries across those four data sets within the report itself, whereas Power BI has capabilities of detecting relationships between multiple data sets in the same report and then actually making its own model inside of memory, its own um, not multi-dimensional but tabular model if you're familiar with that terminology within reporting services same thing that power pivot's been doing within excel for years now as well um, it has that capability of on the fly building a model uh, right there within it so those are kind of the the big pluses and minuses as i see them and real quick what we see in the future as you can tell that was a completely different uh, ui that was being used to build uh, those actual reports so I I have a hard time believing they're gonna stick with it being its own standalone tool for for everything at this point I would hope that some of that uh, capability would get integrated into some of the other tools especially Visual Studio and and the SSDT I know they don't want to go too far down that route because the tool mobile report publisher is meant to be more of a end-user business power user type tool so um, you don't want to put them in into Visual Studio because nobody wants to throw that at end users. They'd be completely lost. So it's going to be hard to decide which way they're going to go with that because, yeah, right now they're they're supporting quite a few different uh, platforms with their own unique development environments. And as I mentioned, we've got the Power BI integration in SSRS 2016 that's on its way. Um, as I mentioned, probably within the next few months is the plan. Uh, at this point in time, if you are interested in actually playing with that and seeing it, it is out there. If you search for uh, SSRS 2016 Power BI um, out on Bing or Google, you should be able to get to the actual download uh, out there. Or if you go to the, um, I'm trying to think, was the, probably the SSRS Microsoft blog would probably be the next best place to look. Uh, if you go out there and look for the articles by Christopher Finlan and Ricardo Muti. Uh, those two guys are the guys that are most responsible for working on this Power BI integration into SSRS 2016. So they, they have been doing a lot of posts about it and you can actually go out and download the preview version of the installer, um, but just be cautious with that. Don't put it on anything other than either a virtual machine or a, a true development machine because um, you won't be able to upgrade the Power BI, the desktop, uh, installer that comes specific for that preview is locked into that um, version of reporting services uh, preview uh, so it, it is definitely should not be a machine that you uh, use regularly uh, just to try this feature out and in the mobile applications I'm sure we'll continue uh, um, going through uh, time as well so that was the one cool thing I could show um, I have a couple I'll take a couple more minutes here um, we'll see if this works this will be my first try at this but uh, I did find a tool that actually allows me to share my phone <laughs> thankfully it's connecting so let me see if I can get this onto the screen to show you guys real quick but just in case you're curious what some of the mobile stuff looks like and how to make it work See if I can pull this over here. Hopefully that's showing my iPhone. So believe it or not, you are actually seeing a fully interactive version of my iPhone screen, which is kind of cool for demos. Is that actually showing through on your side there, Sarah? Yes, I can see it. Cool. Hey, it works. Technology. So yeah, like I mentioned, you do have to get the Power BI mobile app. So once you get that app all uh, installed and set up the first thing you'll probably want to do is go into these settings and you can attach to different uh, Power BI settings in this particular case I've got uh, one where it's you get the samples by default so when you first install the app you can connect out to these samples and it's just a pre-built uh, sample setup or you can connect to your own Power BI um, account if you have one and then the other interesting thing that's down here is uh, in that second section is the reporting services connections. Uh, so here you would actually go out and connect to your actual server that you have reporting services on. And once you do that, that will show you your 
that server's um, reporting services mobile content. So it'll show you the the KPIs and it'll show you those mobile reports uh, on here as how you would use it within that tool. I don't have a server I can connect to and if it was my work server I would have to be on VPN of course to make it work which would probably kill the screen sharing. So um, thankfully there's the sample one that you can look at so by default you get the sample. So this kind of shows you uh, what you would see if you were connecting to your own uh, SSRS server on your own system. These are just samples, um, but you can see if I click on the mobile report, it brings up that report. Use, now, if this report was not built without a, a mobile layout as we went through the design, the publisher, and actually set that up, it would it would try to fit the, the full version, the master version on here. So I definitely recommend going through and creating those uh, mobile versions that you can actually then, um, you know, click in here and actually see how stuff works. This one doesn't have a lot of filtering capabilities, unfortunately, but does have these selectors at the top where you can change the view, whether I'm looking at a year of six months or a quarter, but does show that you can see the KPIs. If you click on them, they go full screen which is really nice. So some interesting stuff as far as how the mobile apps work now that you can actually connect to your reporting services server along with your Power BI. So I do have my regular Power BI work set up actually here as well. Um, and I can kind of show you, I've been playing with some reports that um, track our jobs on our different environments and our different servers that when I select, it filters, you know, all these different options. It doesn't work super great in mobile. Uh, it tries the best it can to fit it um, with this particular setup, but it gives you an idea of some of the mobile stuff you could do actually uh, with um, with Power BI and, and SSRS now. So kind of cool where stuff is going at this point in time. And who would have thought that I'd be able to do all this Microsoft stuff on a uh, Apple device, you know, that the, all that stuff is fully supported now on all these platforms, which is really great. So that was all I had. I assume there's questions in the queue there that we can, I guess, unmute people if we want to or however we want to handle this. I can switch this. I mean, the email address is on that slide. Unfortunately, it's not on the other one, but this has got my Twitter and my email on it. So Somehow I have lost my mouse. Oh, that's why it was stuck. Yeah, so I can put on the other one if we want to see all of my contact info. And like I said, my email address is just swake at ncm.com, so that's pretty easy for email. Uh, Debbie popped one of the questions in there I see. Can we use SQL Server mobile report as a dashboard tool on SQL Server reporting server? It looks like a better option than Power BI desktop report because it can open a web portal right now while Power BI desktop report can't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you, if you have already gone down the route of building out uh, stuff with um, mobile reporting, you could use that as your dashboarding tool and it's available right now and if you have a license for uh, SSRS 2016, uh, you can fully deploy that right now and get it set up and working uh, in your environment and um, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be, it'll, it's working now and as far as I've heard will continue to work into the future. Uh, they haven't said anything's going to change there until like I said, summer uh, or late this year when the SSRS gets the full capability to um, host and, and launch Power BI reports. So if you are on 2016 and want some kind of a, a platform for that, then yeah, it's certainly uh, the only option out there if it has to be hosted on your local instances because there's, the with Power BI, the only way you can do that locally today is, is to pass around that PBIX file that gets generated out of Power BI Desktop. You actually just send that file out or put it up on your SharePoint server, but then they had, still have to launch uh, Power BI Desktop to actually get to it. Or if your company is comfortable with the cloud, you could publish it up to powerbi.com and access it that way. So that's kind of where we're at with that. I have a quick question. Um... 
license wise uh, with the mobile part uh, combined with the SSRS or it's uh, d they're different yeah so licensing the way it's currently set up is the mobile reporting all requires enterprise um, so you cannot use mobile on standard edition at all um, yeah and that's what Debbie just put out as a question so yeah if you want to use any of the mobile capabilities you have to be on enterprise I would assume as well for the Power BI functionality when that comes out later this year it will require an enterprise license for that as well uh, so if you are you know going down that route of mobile any way whatsoever you're gonna have to go enterprise unfortunately and they and they unfortunately got rid of the BI edition because they used to have a BI edition of uh, SQL Server which they um, stopped doing when 2016 came out so yeah unfortunately those are your only two options is standard or enterprise <laughs> So if you use the master version to, well, can you print, you know, the make it the way it looks like just on your cell phone when you print out the report? Let me print out the, so I don't know what kind of printing capabilities are even supported with mobile. I have a feeling basically none. <laughs> you okay. know, there's, there's no export to... Um, as far as I know, it's been a while since I've tried, but I don't think, because it's not like reporting services where it even brings up an export. So yeah, when I'm browsing it, you can see there's no panel to allow, the only, the best thing you do is, is a regular screenshot. So you could do a screen grab is about as good as it gets for printing. There's no, uh, print capability or export even, um, within this. Uh, once you're in the actual report itself, unfortunately. So that's, yeah, if you if you need printing and stuff and exporting, um, Power BI does have those capabilities. Yeah, there's somebody, that's the next question. It's like, it's like Debbie's almost reading her mind here. But, um, ah, yeah, so you, yeah the, the Power BI export to PowerPoint, um, is that actually available? Yes, I think it is available now in um, in preview I do believe you can access that let me log into my Power BI instance real quick we could verify that real fast uh, if I go into a report I think you can do it by report I know you can save it oh what's that that's not good it went to a black screen oh no it's a black for you guys too Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, PowerPoint died. What the heck? Wow. PowerPoint crashed on me. Oh, well. Go away. Stop. PowerPoint took over and went crazy. So you can do, um, yeah, export to PowerPoint. Yep, they did add export to PowerPoint. From the, uh, when you've published it up to the web, at least, uh, you can actually um, do the export out to PowerPoint for all reports. Uh, you'll notice there's also an option here. It'd be a little hard to see since it's grayed out, but uh, the ability to download the report as well. But because this particular report uh, was generated quite a while ago, it doesn't support the saving. You have to have uploaded it as a brand new report up to the Power BI cloud service from November of some date forward from last year. Those are the only ones you can actually download at this point in time. So it's only newer reports that you can actually do that for. And then they did also add a preview for embedding uh, the report into SharePoint online. So not SharePoint um, on premises, but SharePoint online. What kind of format report? Yeah, so as far as I know with the mobile reports, there is no export capability whatsoever uh, with the reports. Um, maybe something within Publisher might be able to, I know you can export the data out of the individual pieces of the, you know, the individual data sets, um, but I don't think you can actually export any of the visualizations out of mobile reports today. I don't know if that's something that's on the roadmap to be addressed or, or not. And for some reason now, Mobile Report Publisher doesn't want to launch either. <laughs> yeah, every time I try to launch it, it crashes. Oh, nice. So there's another negative. 
apparently the software isn't one hundred percent stable. <laughs> <laughs> can't answer. Can't answer why that's a problem. It could be my VM too. It's hard to say. But yeah, for some reason I can't even get Publisher to launch anymore to verify that. But yeah, as far as I know, they haven't added any export capabilities, unfortunately. So Power BI uh, can you you can use Power BI to grab uh, data from different sources, but Correct. mobile report you can only grab it from the SSR server. Is that right? Yeah, you can only use data sets that are already deployed to your SSRS server and Excel files. So you can grab them from local Excel files uh, as right. well. But that those are the only two options you got. And at one point, I think you were showing like um, donor, uh, there's one donut uh, type, and then mm -hmm. there's some um, bar chart. Uh, is it? Like, uh, can if you need say like two bar charts on the same report, is that possible, or you can oh, only yeah. do one? Oh okay. no, no, you could put as many of the same uh, controls onto the the surface as as you want. If you want to put five bar different bar charts on there, yeah, you can put five of them on there, um, attached to each of them, then attached to different data sets or filtered versions of the data sets that you've got set up. Yep. And they, they, you can have like a multiple pages, is that right? No, no you can't. Not with the, the way mobile reports are set up today, you would have to, if you kind of want to think of the page setup like you can do with Power BI, you would be creating that many separate mobile reports basically would be your pages, but they'd, they'd all be deployed as separate mobile reports. So the idea is that it's a report is like, yeah, one screen. Uh, basically, you could use the drill through to kind of get through some of that, maybe, uh, where you can link, you know, click on something will allow you to drill to a different uh, mobile report if that's what you wanted to do. But as far as actually having like a bar down at the bottom, like Power BI has, that lets you select between different pages, that doesn't exist with mobile reports today. Okay. Oh, that's another then, drawback. <laughs> yeah, and then it looks like there's a question Debbie pushed out about um, if I don't have a Power BI account, can I use the mobile app? Yes, you can. Um, you're not required to have uh, an account, and it will still allow you, even without a Power BI account, to actually do that connection to your your own SSRS server. So if you want to do mobile reports, you have SSRS 2016 all set up, but you have no connection to Power BI, you can still use that Power BI app, install it, and then go into the settings and connect to that report server. So um, you don't have to have that. The yeah, BI last one, yeah. Deliver last mobile one. reports through email using the link. I'm not sure what that one email using the link. I think they're thinking of like when you can do subscriptions and stuff like that and alerts within reporting services and it can actually deliver uh, the report through email. As far as I know there's no uh, current capabilities to do that with mobile reports. I think that's pretty much limited uh, to just the um, of course I'm not on that server anymore that's limited to uh, SSRS paginated reports and they've added some of those kind of capabilities to Power BI reports as well. Um, but as far as I know, geez, wow, it really doesn't want to run. It's now Internet Explorer is crashing. So I can't show that. <laughs> what do you feel about the mobile publisher drill through feature? Uh, I can't say I've had a ton of exposure with it so I can't give you one way or the other but you could tell from um, what I showed there that it is still pretty limited. There's really just the two options. You could uh, go out to any URL. Uh, I did see a demo uh, that's online this last week. I think it was actually Christopher Finland or one of the guys from Microsoft actually put it out there that you could use that custom URL option uh, to make a drill through from a mobile report, go out and pass parameters out to uh, an existing SSRS report. Uh, so there's there's capabilities there of you know using the URL option to actually go 
out to other reports like SSRS, regular SSRS reports, and Power BI for that matter. There's no reason why if you had it on PowerBI.com, you couldn't link directly to those reports too. Um, but then, yeah, as far as um, the other options, it's pretty much there for doing the kind of filtering stuff where you select stuff and it actually changes what you're filtering by, which in Power BI is called cross-filtering, and that's just every control you drop onto the page automatically understands each other, so they all talk to each other, and you can actually click and, and change that functionality. That kind of smooth functionality doesn't exist in the mobile reports, at least today. It takes, it takes you going through and setting up stuff, and there's no way you could ever set up all the possibilities that I know of that Power BI can just do out of the box with just dragging controls onto the page. So that's one of the negatives uh, there with mobile reports, at least in the way they are today. Cool. Is there any more questions? Okay, uh, then you... Um, with the new generation of self-service BI tools, I feel the use case to adapt mobile report as the reporting tool is quite slim. Right. How, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I agree, and and I think it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's almost like two different parts of Microsoft where, you know, one part with the SSRS team was like, oh, we need some way to do mobile because they didn't have anything. Um, that worked with mobile at all with the SSRS and the way it's always been. So they went out and panicked and bought data Zen to get something. But then on the other side of Microsoft, they were already working on Power BI that already had from, it was built from the ground up with mobile in mind. So there, it seems like there's almost two competing parts of Microsoft on this, which I've never really understood what their full vision is there. Um, which is why I was kind of pointing out that if you've already invested a lot in those data sets and you already have those out there and deployed, I would say um, you're a perfect candidate for going to the mobile right now uh, because it's all your infrastructure should all be there to build the reports. Um, but then, yeah, keep an eye on Power BI because it's really coming up fast as far as being able to support everything because everything you do in Power BI is, is mobile already already it's not like you have to go because you're still going to have to with the mobile reports go build these new reports it's not um, they're not pre-built for you uh, just that the data sets at least are already there so the data parts done but not the uh, building of the reports where if you're gonna start from the ground up right now I would go Power BI at this point so that's kind of my opinion <laughs> Um, I guess, like in my uh, organization, the way they didn't want to go to Power BI is because the the licensing fee for the end user, you know, like the ten dollar, well, right. nine ninety nine dollar, and it adds up if you have a large user base. It does, and the other way you can look at that too is if your company is already on Office three sixty five. Uh, where everybody has to have, you know, a subscription through Office 365. If you're on the, uh, I can always get these confused, I think it's the E3 license, what they call the E3 license for Office 365. It uh -huh. actually includes Power BI Pro in that licensing cost. So you may find that if, if you have so many users that you're paying the $10 per user per year for, or per month for, it may actually be cheaper just to switch your entire enterprise license over to Office 365 E3 that gives everybody that's already licensed for Office 365 Power BI Pro already. So that's an option, too, that's out there. Oh, cool. Yep. So, it, uh, okay, it has Power BI Pro included mm -hmm. already? If you're if you're on an e, what they call an E3 level, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I think it's the highest level of Office 365 Enterprise is what it is. And there might be some others for nonprofits and educational too. I know there's all kinds of different tiers for government, educational, and nonprofits that some of those levels may include Power BI Pro with them as well. You just need to dig into that with your Microsoft rep 
or something to find out if you got that or not. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep. Great. Um, I don't see more questions coming in. Um, thank you so much, Steve, uh, for the great presentation. We do learn a lot. Great. <laughs> I really appreciate you prepared this uh, presentation and spent your Saturday um, <laughs> <laughs> to do it. Uh, yep, for, no problem. For virtual chapter and and then we'll probably see you in June. <laughs> yep, yep. I'll do one in June. That's yeah, probably a little bit more Power BI um, focused too. So, yep. Yeah, that that's great. Cool. Thank you so much, yep. and thank everybody for attending. And this uh, presentation is recorded, and I will um, publish it on the uh, YouTube later on probably tomorrow or if possible and then I'll send out the link to those people who subscribe uh, register for this meeting thank you thank you Steve. and thank you everybody and this meeting is adjourned thank you very much I'll stop the recording I'm um, not sure how to stop the recording at this point.